Hi, and welcome to lesson 12 on quantum repeaters. Step 1. The need for repeaters. In the previous lesson, we have seen that there is one big problem when trying to communicate over long distances, and that's photon loss in fibers. So the further that we are trying to communicate, the more likely we are to actually lose the photon, and we saw how we can handle it classically. There's also another problem, and that's the number of devices that are connected to the network. So currently there are 7.8 billion people, an estimated 31 billion Internet of Things devices. That means that somehow all of these devices can communicate with each other. How is that achieved? Well, one way is to actually establish a direct connection between each device that are present in the network. In other words, we could have something like a complete graph. If we start with two, they are just connected by a single link. If we have three, we have three links. And we can see that as we are adding more and more devices into the network, more and more nodes into the network, then the number of links is also increasing. And in fact, it's increasing as the uh, second, as the quadratic order of the number of nodes in the network. Is this how real networks work? Actually, no, because each individual link, for example, the link between this node and this node, requires specialized dedicated hardware that are that is allowing to communicate and use uh, communicate that is allowing communication between these nodes uh, um, and if we are adding such a device such a hardware for every single possible connection we see that it's not practical for example uh, if if we just have five network five nodes in the network then each individual node requires five dedicated connections in order to be able to communicate with any arbitrary uh, network node that's fine for small networks but clearly it does not scale with the size of the network further complication is that if we add a new node to the network just by adding a new node, we have to go back to each networks that are already existing in the network and install a new hardware with dedicated link to this new node. So how, how does it work? How do we communicate in real life? Well, we use networks. And the point of a network is that we don't have all-to-all -all connection. We don't have a complete graph representing the network, yet we can still communicate between arbitrary nodes. For example, we can communicate from this little guy over here all the way down to this guy that's down here in the network. And the job of a network is to establish a connection between uh, these two nodes. But, so, if we want to do it in a quantum way, what do we do? Well, we saw that one way of transferring quantum information is via teleportation. So, we could say that, well, we can have an entangled pair uh, between the neighboring networks and use that to um, teleport uh, our quantum information from this node onto its neighbor. And then we can hop from neighbor to neighbor all the way across uh, to the target node. But as we do this, we have to apply the same operations again and again, and these operations are noisy. The entangled states that are shared between the neighboring nodes are also noisy. So by the time we reach our target node, the information encoded in the quantum state will have deteriorated to, by a large amount, rendering the state um, impractical and basically useless. So now we actually go back and we kind of wish that we actually had a direct connection between these two nodes. If these nodes were sharing a direct entangled pair, then we could just directly, um, directly teleport our information from the, uh, uh, um, from the sender node to the target node. And we will see in this lesson that this is in fact possible without having dedicated har hardware and all-to-all -all connections, physical connections in a quantum network. So we will address four requirements in this lesson. First, we will show how to establish entanglement between neighboring nodes. And we will refer to this as link level entanglement. So we will have physical connection between neighboring nodes and see how the, uh, these nodes can be entangled. Then we will address the question, how can we extend this entanglement over larger distances and many hops in the network without having a dedicated physical connection between these two distant networks? 
of course, uh, we said we, uh, that there's uh, always going to be some noise and sources of error. So we will address the question of how to handle uh, these sources of error and imperfections. And finally, we will look at uh, management of networks, and in particular, routing and multiplexing and resource management.